Before we really get started on creating walls, I just want to mention again the difference between system families and component families because a number of the elements that we create in this module are going to be system families and walls are a good example of that. Remember, system families are created by the system, i.e. in Revit, when we need them. So, architecture, wall, we choose a wall type and we create our elements. Revit is creating these wall elements on the fly as we define them, but we can't take those individual pieces of wall and save them outside of this project. That is fundamentally different to a component family such as a light fitting or a table or a chair, which is almost like a, a standalone block. We can create it in this project using the family editor, but we can also save those type of families as separate files on our system. They have a .rfa file extension and they can be reused in other projects. You'll recall from the unit on the properties palette that at the top here we have what's called the type selector. So if I start the wall tool and we look at this type selector and expand it, I just want to show you that within here we have three different basic wall groups that we can use. So the top group is called basic wall and there are a number of types under there. Depending on your template you will see different types listed here. I'll show you later in the course how you can easily create an infinite number of additional types. But If we move down for now we next come to the curtain wall group. That's a specific type of wall element and later on in the course I'm going to show you exactly how to create your own curtain walls using these tools. And then finally at the bottom we have a group called stacked walls. Those are for when you want to take any of these other wall types and stack them or nest them vertically into a think of it as a virtual container called a stacked wall so you might have a, a wall which is composed vertically of four or five different wall types you give that stacked wall a name and then when you create a wall you're automatically creating those four or five wall types vertically all at the same time Okay, let's go ahead and create a basic wall. So I'm in a floor plan view, level zero. Architecture menu on the first panel, the build panel, we've got wall, select wall. Just note the options bar changes. We'll go through some of these things shortly, some of these key options. The main things to note now uh, the properties palette has changed to show us the different wall types that are available. Remember that drop down selector for the different types. So go ahead and pick a wall type from the basic wall group. So I'm going to leave it on that one for now. Uh, click a start point for my wall. Just going to zoom in with my scroll wheel a little bit so we can see what's happening and you can see I can move my cursor to choose the direction I want that wall to go in and click for an endpoint on that wall. Now if I finished creating walls remember I can press the escape key or remember that modify button it's always on the left hand side of the ribbon cancels out of the current command so we're back to the default state in Revit Let's go ahead and add a couple more walls in. So again, back to wall. Now you'll notice on that options bar that about halfway along there's a tick box called chain. With that turned on, I can carry on adding segments of wall without having to go back and hit that wall command each time. 
so it allows me to draw them in a chain so I can just snap anywhere on the end of this wall because I've got chain turned on I can continue adding elements in wherever I need those to be and remember the alignment line so it's helping me line up my new elements with the existing ones already in the model and I'll close it at the end there and again hit modify to cancel that wall command notice how all the junctions have automatically been tidied up for us I'm just going to go ahead and create another section of wall so architecture wall just before I put the wall into the model I want you to look at the options bar here and at this parameter location line and there's a drop down and we've got some options here wall center line core center line finish face exterior and so forth I'm going to explain now what this parameter location line actually does for now let's leave it on wall center line click a start point for my wall and I'm just going to zoom in and you can see as I move my cursor to the right where the alignment line is remember the light blue dotted line notice that the path my cursor takes is along the center line of the wall and that's because I have that location line parameter set on center line so if you like the path that I am drawing represents the center line of the wall now the neat feature of Revit is that it will remember the path that was used on a per element basis so let me just cancel out of that for now so if I select that instance of wall and we look over at its properties we can see location line it was set to wall center line let's go back and add some more elements of wall in but this time I'm going to change that to finish face exterior click a start point notice now that the path my cursor is taking is along the external face of the wall so the question you're probably asking is what is the purpose of that location line parameter and what difference does it actually make if we're putting the same type of wall in well if we were to change this wall type in any way it's its makeup its structure i.e. its thickness it will change its location depending on which location line parameter value we chose so for example these segments here were created as you've just seen set to the external face if I was to change this wall type and make the wall twice as thick the external face would stay in exactly the same location as it is now and the wall would just get thicker so it would eat away into the interior space of our building going back to the original segments we put in remember we chose the wall center line as the location line for these if we made this wall twice as thick the center line of the wall would stay where it is and the wall would expand internally and externally so it's quite important to think about what you want that setting to be let's go back to wall when you're putting your wall segments in so typically if you know your brick coordinating sizes as you're putting in your external wall you may want to set that location line to finish face exterior 
and then at least if you go and change the makeup of the wall let's say you make the insulation or the cavity thicker you're not going to mess up those brick dimensions because the outside line there won't change location the wall will just get thicker or thinner depending on how you alter that structure so let's look at how we control the height of our wall segments for this example I've just got a single piece of wall or a single instance of wall in my model if I switch to a south elevation there is the wall in elevation and I've got two levels set up in my model one at a height of zero and one at four meters so for now I'm just going to select that segment of wall and let's have a look at the properties in the properties palette that actually concern the height we've got a base constraint that is what level does the wall start at and you can see it's set to level zero when we look across at our elevation you can see indeed the base of the wall lines up with level zero we've got a base offset I'll talk about that in a second move down to top constraint now at the moment it's set to unconnected if I click in there and have the little drop down come down you can see I have a choice of levels so this is a level parameter all the levels in your project will be listed in this drop down I've only got two levels in the whole project hence there's only two listed there so you've got the, the list of levels you've got and unconnected if it's set to unconnected that basically means that Revit is not using any of these levels to control the top of it if it's unconnected you then use the next parameter down unconnected height and you give it an absolute value there an absolute height so in this case it's set at 8 meters high much more useful I would suggest rather than using unconnected heights is to have your levels control the height of your walls so I'm going to pick level 1 from the drop down and if I move my cursor off the properties palette we can see that the wall has now come down or the top of the wall has come down and is constrained by this level so now you can really start to get a feel for how these levels work why these datums are important because they can control the heights of objects so I'll just go back to my 3d view just so you can see as you may expect that it's reduced in height in that view as well let me just go back to the south elevation select that segment of wall again now we mentioned before about this base offset you'll also see that there is a top offset as well what that or those offsets do is just give you the ability to apply a positive or negative value that you want that wall to start at in relation to the base and the top level respectively so if for example I need this wall to have its base start 500 mil down from whatever level zero is currently at I can select the piece of wall click in there put minus 500 move my cursor outside the palette and you can see that the wall now starts 500 mil lower than level zero and that relationship will always be maintained so if for example I was to move level zero up or down you can see the base of the wall moves accordingly and that offset is respected exactly the same with the top so select that piece of wall so this could be our roof level if it's a flat roof and I want the walls to go up a meter above to form a parapet I could set the top offset to one meter move my cursor off the palette 
and again the height of the wall now sails past the level by a meter and it always will regardless of whether I move the level up or down. In the default Autodesk template that ships with Revit you get a number of wall types just to get you started so if I show you the drop down selector there you can see that there are a number of basic wall types already predefined but at some point you are most certainly going to want to create your own new wall types and I'm going to show you how to do that now let's come out of that and take it right from step one so select wall the properties palette changes to show you the wall properties there's the currently selected wall type if there's a wall type that's very similar to what you're trying to create select that first so let's stick with that one there you then need to hit this edit type button and before you do anything else at all you need to select duplicate I can't stress that enough if you don't and you start adjusting these parameters here you're going to be adjusting this existing wall type not a new one so you need to duplicate the existing one first so remember edit type and then straight away duplicate it asks you for a name for the new wall type it basically takes the existing one you've based it on and adds a number two by default I'm just going to adjust that I'm going to make my new wall type have a hundred and fifty mil insulation this one has 75 mil insulation at the moment so I'm just changing that in the name box there so the name is more meaningful so it represents uh, the wall type we're going to create remember this is just the name I'm changing here by changing that value it doesn't change the insulation we're going to do that in a second so I'll OK that there in this drop down you can now see that there is a new wall type and there is the the new type listed that's the name we gave it remember we changed that to 150 so go back there make sure that is selected if you're changing the structure the build up i.e. the layers that make up the wall it's this top parameter you're interested in structure here hit the edit button and you get this edit assembly panel and in the center of this panel it's almost like a, a spreadsheet if you like uh, with different rows each row represents a layer in your wall build up so at the top that's the external side of the wall and at the bottom is the interior side so we look down and we find the layer we're interested in and it's this one here the second one and the material is fiberglass and its thickness is currently 75 mil because remember this at the moment this is just a copy of the previous wall type I'm going to simply go on there change that to 150 mil for the thickness of that particular layer hit OK hit OK again now that segment at the moment is of the original type and you can see that is verified in the type selector there is its name so if we go down there is the type we've just created so I can swap out the, the type we've got at the moment to that one just simply by making sure it's selected and then picking on the type name and you will notice that the wall instantly changes to the new type and it's got thicker with that 150 mil of insulation so just run through that very quickly again on creating new wall types select wall find a type that's similar to that which you want to create hit edit type remember to duplicate that to create a copy of it 
change the name accordingly and then hit that edit structure button and go and make the adjustments to your layers. Now you can take some of these layers out if they're no longer applicable using the delete key or you can insert new layers just like inserting a row in Excel. So insert, you get a new entry there. Pick the material. Clicking that little button will bring up the materials browser. I'm just going to pick a, a material at random here just to demonstrate. So pick a material, pick a thickness for it. You can move these layers up and down. You can change the order there. Just select it and change its order relative to the other layers. When you're happy with it, hit OK again. And now we can swap out the existing wall by selecting it, bringing the drop down selector and picking the new one we've just created. We can see that additional layer suddenly appears in the new wall type. Many of the wall types you create won't be symmetrical about their center line i.e. the external face will be different from the internal face for example. So when you're putting wall segments into your model there is a convention for the direction of travel when you're specifying the path of your walls and that is a clockwise convention. For example if I want to put a few segments of wall into my model here I need to go around my building in a clockwise direction and back to the start just tidy up that corner show you these trim tools later on in the course now if I switch to a 3d view you can see indeed this wall type isn't symmetrical across its center line it's plastered on the inside and has brickwork as its face on the outside and you can see that the model is correct i.e. the brickwork is on the outside of the building and the plaster is on the inside and that is because I followed that clockwise convention when I placed my wall segments down into the model. If you do happen to have placed your walls in an anti-clockwise direction they will be inside out so I've done that on purpose in this example here just so we can see what happens and how to correct it. So if I switch to a 3D view there indeed is my simple building which now has plaster on the outside and brickwork on the inside. Switch back quickly to my floor plan if I select a segment of wall you will notice the two little arrows there that make up the orientation icon I can quite simply click on that and it will hand the wall over You'll notice by the hatch pattern it's swapped I'll just change it back you can also select the wall and use the spacebar and each press of the spacebar will toggle it I go back to my 3D view and you can also do multiple instances of the wall in one go so for example I select all segments of wall and tap the spacebar I deselect everything you can see all segments of my wall were handed over or reorientated in one go just by selecting them all and then tapping the spacebar and that completes this unit. To get the most out of this training material, please take the complete course online at bimscape.com. Here you will find a complete learning management system that allows you to work through the course at your own pace. Comprehensive written tutorials provide additional information to that found in the training videos. Mark each unit as complete as you finish it and move on to the next. 
At any point, you can return to any of the units you have previously completed to go over the material again. If you'd like to take this course online, please visit www.bimscape.com forward slash Revit for details.